Hi, this is Howard Schwartz, and in this video, I'd like to show you uh, some ideas about how to draw from the imagination, in particular, how to do gesture drawings. Now, drawing from the imagination is something that I've wanted to do for, for decades, and it's something that I, that I really struggled with and have been very frustrated by. And what I've tried to do recently is to come up with strategies that would help me approach drawing from the imagination in a, in a simplified way so that it wouldn't be such an intimidating experience. And by doing so, I would be able to um, tap into the, the, the art information that I've, I've stored in, in my brain through the years to make it easier to draw something even if I'm not looking directly at it. So the thing that I discovered recently is that one of the most important things to enable me to draw from my imagination is, and I'm going to write this down to emphasize the point, is to have simplification. And what I mean by that is to have a simplified vocabulary of the strokes that you're going to make on the paper so that you don't have to think too much about how you're drawing what you're drawing and you can focus more on letting your mind play with the, the simple shapes. And um, in so doing, you'll be able to get more interesting gesture drawings. So basically, the two shapes that are going to be the sum total of um, your vocabulary are an oval or circular shape, like so, and straight lines, like so. Now the lines could be straight, or they could be curved, or they could be parallel, or they could go off in different directions. Uh, let's see. something like that. So there are really no, no rules to this. The, uh, the whole idea of doing this exercise is to be able to free your mind up so that you have um, a wider range of, of, um, of solutions that you can, you can strive towards. So let, let me erase this and I'm going to select a brush that's not quite as uh, distinct as this. Something that I'm going to use an airbrush as opposed to the calligraphic brush that, I, that I'm using now. So let me just select that. Uh, and that looks good. And I'm going to put the setting down to about 25 so it's not too big. And I'm going to go back to, I guess I could try this in blue just to get another another color on the page. And the opacity I'm going to go down also. What, I, what I'm trying to do is get something that's a little bit like charcoal in terms of the opacity and the freedom of the stroke. So anyway, as I was saying, you have an oval shape like so. And then you have um, straight lines that can represent the torso. And then you can have lines, I'm kind of running out of room, that represent the legs, straight line to represent the arms. And um, I haven't put the figure much of a pose, but this is just to give you a basic idea of the vocabulary that we have at our disposal to do the drawings that we're about to do. So let me erase this again so I have more room on the page. And I'm going to draw a reclining figure from my imagination. So I'm going to start off with the oval for the head. And again, I'm not committed to any line that I make. I can erase and change any line that I want. So I'm going to have this, this figure reclining like so. 
And I'm noticing as I'm as I'm drawing this that it kind of reminds me of the um, of the Michelangelo, the creation, the creation of Adam, the creation of man. Where here's here's Adam reclining and reaching out uh, to God. Uh, so, as I said, this this is in. I'm doing this in as simplified a way as possible. Just a few simple lines. And I'm not really concerned about how accurate the lines are. I'm, I'm more concerned with having fun with it and coming up with um, an interesting gesture. And one of the things that I do remember from the actual uh, painting on the Sistine ceiling is that this line that I have over here, which is the uh, the right side of the torso from what I recall with and I'm not looking at this so this is just from memory that line is much further to the left so I'm going to erase this and I'm going to erase part of this also because I have this image that the torso is straighter here and a little bit more muscular and then it starts this tremendous curve so let me um, erase this line as well and bring this further down. Like so. And here he's resting on his, his weight on the one arm, on the right arm, while reaching out to the heavens. So, this is, uh, you know, when I started doing this drawing, I didn't have a, uh, the actual painting, the Michelangelo painting in mind. But when I, when I started drawing, and I guess subconsciously in my mind, um, I, got, I, I was using it as a reference. So I was able to make a uh, correction from having been familiar with the painting all these years. So let me, um, let me try something else. Let me erase this again. As I said, the, the, whole th the whole idea of doing this isn't just to be able to draw from the imagination, it's also to be able to stimulate the imagination. And as I said, this is something that I struggled with, with year for years and years because what I always wanted to be able to do is I wanted to be able to envision what I was drawing in my mind perfectly as if it were existing in the real world in front of me and then basically to copy it. And uh, I've learned through the years that that isn't so possible. Uh, after, after trying to do that long enough, I realized I can't really do that. But if I can do things to awaken the imagination, even if I'm not able to do exactly what my original intent was, then I could still come up with interesting drawings and interesting poses anyway. So here's another, here's a start to another drawing. There's the head shape. And again, here's the, tof, uh, the torso that's leaning in this direction. And here's the arm up here. And I'm thinking that maybe what I can do is, is a quarterback, an NFL quarterback, who's poised to throw a football. So there's, there's the football with my simplistic arm. And here his weight is leaning back, so I'm going to have the legs go a little bit in the opposite direction. And there, there we have that pose. Now, one, one of the more difficult things to do when doing these gesture drawings is to be able to see, to see the figure three-dimensionally. And this is something I've given a, a lot of thought to over the years, that this forearm, this right forearm that's holding the football, I intentionally tried to foreshorten it and I tried to do the same a little bit here with this, um, with this leg. Because if you don't do that, what you wind up getting is, is a cutout where everything is on one plane. And um, you're welcome to do anything you want while you're experimenting and, and vary from what I'm doing in any way, shape, or form that you want to just use what I'm, what I'm showing you here as a starting point. But what, the, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do in, in these drawings is to um, 
is to convey the motion and try and try to do it in three dimensional space that's not bound by um, by by two dimensions, and that's what I mean by about having the the uh, the upper leg in, in in a foreshortened position, and the forearm here in a foreshortened position, and this arm doesn't necessarily have to be parallel to the torso or parallel to the head. It could be coming forward, or it could be going back. Pro probably go going forward a little bit would make make a little bit more sense. That would be the way someone would normally be positioned as they were about to uh, to throw a football pass. So let me just do a couple more. Let me erase this. And I, I, th I think through the years when I've tried to do gesture drawings or drawing from the imagination, the, the uh, ideas that I had in my mind were too complex. And my, the way I would draw the torso would be complex, and the way I would draw the head would be complex. And I think that was, that was basically taking away from the point of what I was trying to do. So here's here's another one because it's it's much easier to go from being very simple to being more complex than it is to start off being complex at the very beginning. So here's another torso and what I'm envisioning here is uh, is a baseball player who's at bat. So Here's the bat, and here's the torso, here's one of his arms, and here's the other arm, and then I'm going to give him a fairly wide stance at the plate, and again the same thing with the, the, fore, um, the foreshortened upper leg, and here's the other other leg, and I guess you can envision this as uh, a twist in the in the torso. Just to add a little bit more, if I were doing that, all all the stuff that that would not have occurred to me um, in in the past. Now it's it's almost like the drawing is drawing itself, and even if I'm struggling, even if I don't have things in the quite quite the right place. As I do something a little bit more more finished, so I don't I don't particularly like this because I think that maybe the um, the leg sh the upper leg should be a little bit more vertical. So let me erase this. Let me let me try that again. That actually has a little bit uh, less of a gesture to it than the other one. So as, as I said, this is. This is all um, trial and error and, and investigating. As long as I don't put too much pressure on myself that I have to do a perfect drawing with a perfect pose right, right off the bat, uh, I think there's a lot to be gained from this. And I found using this approach was a lot easier when I was doing quick sketches of things that I was looking at. And that, that was one of the indications that I had and I, when I went to this room, where I'm not using photographic reference or in any other reference, I'm not posing in front of a mirror, that it would be easier to come up with a pose that, uh, that, makes, that makes sense. So let, let, me, uh, let me do one, one or two other quick drawings. I'm going to do a woman. Give her a little bit of a longer head here. And here's her torso over here. And I'm going to have her um, drinking coffee. And as I said, I'm going to do this in a way where I'm not going to be judgmental about how successful the drawing is. So here's a table where the woman is sitting. And let's see. I'll have the arm curl curl around. And here here's the beginning of her leg. And again just just simple lines. Here's the other leg. And some of this is 
going um, off the off the page, but it, it's okay. You get the the idea of what I'm what I'm trying to do. And let's see. Here's the other the other arm. And just to do something a little bit more elaborate, if we have her looking to her left, which is our right, the neck would be in this position. And draw this as simply as possible in keeping with the spirit of what I'm doing. There are the breasts, and here's the, the hair all to one side. So you get a little bit of a twist. Let's see. Where the torso is looking to the left, and then here she's sitting uh, facing, facing to the right. As, as if um, she was paying attention to drinking the coffee or, or, or whatever it is that she's drinking. And then all of a sudden, something um, interesting happens to her left and, and she, she turns around. So let me just put in a, some features. And this is the cartoonist in me that's drawing her this way. And... Make her a little bit surprised. Let's see. Give her a little bit of that. So. Long sleeve shirt. Maybe uh, yeah, give her eyes. The eyes are always good. Give her eyebrows. So as I said, all this is from my imagination. No reference whatsoever. And maybe so something really scary here. That um, is making her turn. Uh, you know what? Maybe it would be scary if it were a child instead of an adult. So let me erase this. And as I said, you can be very playful with this. You're not bound to any one idea or any way of looking at this. So we'll make the, the head a little bit rounder. With big eyes. Um, arms sticking out. Two lines for the, uh, the torso and little short little legs and here's a diaper let's see big eyes there Actually, in, in, in this case, th this is interesting because it looks like the baby is afraid of something. Not quite. I, I was originally going to have the baby scare, scare the woman, but rather than that, here the baby is afraid. I think what I have to do is make the top part a little bit bigger because a lot of, the, of a baby's features are concentrated in the um, in the lower half of the uh, of the face. So, whatever you decide to do with it, this is just this is just an one 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 idea. And here we could do uh, a line for the room that she might be in, and. Uh, Here's an entrance way. Maybe a, some bricks here. Who knows wh where she is or what she's doing? But um, and here's the shadow of the baby here. So I, I guess the point of this is that I was able to come up with this drawing, on, and I wasn't even planning on doing this drawing when when I started doing the video, but. 
I, th I think drawing the lines in a simplified way freed up my imagination to be able to come up with something that I wasn't thinking about in advance, which is the whole idea, I think, of being able to draw from the imagination. So thank you very much for watching this video, and, um, and that, that's it for now.